let's talk about why you need an ATS. If you aren't familiar, an applicant tracking system is really just a way for you to keep track of people who are applying for jobs with your company. So you have a portal and people can go in and they can apply. They can uh, basically post their resume direct. You can do job board postings directly from it. So if you're using Monster, Indeed, you can directly post out directly to that. When applicants do apply, you've got really nice management. You can rate them and you can actually parse their resumes. You also have a place to store your resumes. And of course, the main thing you're gonna to wanna to do is schedule interviews with these people and most applicant tracking systems will help you do all of that as well. But in a nutshell, it's just a really, really nice way to, uh, you've got a lot of jobs that are available and you've got a lot of people applying and you wanna track them, uh, this is for you. All right, so let's take kind of take you through some overview and features. So as you look at the overall um, homepage of Zoho Recruit, you will notice if you're a Zoho user, it looks an awful lot like Zoho CRM. Um, these are very, very closely related. As a matter of fact, they're virtually identical with the fact that Zoho Recruit has got five different modules that kind of make it or just using job boards. This is what's missing from the CRM. But other than that, uh, if you're familiar with Zoho CRM, you're gonna easily be able to get around inside of Zoho Recruit, uh, really straightforward uh, that way. So the homepage, that's where you can build your dashboards. It gives you, lets you know right off the bat, you know, how many actives, how many applicants, how many offers you have out, all of those kind of things. On the job opening tabs, whatever job openings you have, they're going to be listed here, whether they're active, whether they're in progress, whether they're closed out. And you can also do the custom views. So this is kind of important when you have job openings. Um, if you're familiar with custom views inside of Zoho CRM, this allows you to filter. Like I only want to see job openings that are in progress. I only want to see job openings that are closed out. Uh, so you can kind of look at those as well. So as you kind of grow your business and build out your Zoho Recruit, you'll be able to filter those various records. Then candidates, all of your candidates as they flow in, you will see them here as well. And then any interviews you set up, all of those interviews, the candidates, the department name, the status of that interview, they'll all flow in here as well. And then you've got your overall assessments that you can put out, which will have various questions that you can give to the class, such as screening. And then, you know, we've got some basic ones here, uh, pre-screening assessment, a general assessment, a standalone questionnaire, and you can customize these. You know, if you're hiring a coder, perhaps you want to ask them a series of questions. If you're hiring an admin, maybe you just want to understand their general knowledge of uh, office products and how those work, you know, how good are they at Excel. So you basically can customize these assessments and those, those will be scored and actually be attached then to the overall applicant. Then you can set up all of your departments. So you maybe you've got a development department, you've got a marketing department, sales department, um, who's in charge of those, who's doing the interviewing, all of those kind of things. And again, if you're familiar with CRM, you've got the standard to do. So all of the to do's that are associated with working with the applicants, you need to have a follow-up phone call, uh, you need to, you got a new candidate, you need to check out their resume, all of those to-dos can come in here as well. And then if you are familiar with the little settings gear inside CRM, it's over here as well. And the interesting part about that is it looks exactly like the CRM settings and most of it is, it is pretty much the same, but there are four areas here we're gonna talk about that are different and you really need to pay attention to when you're setting up the recruit product. So let's start with resume management. We're going to go through this one kind of quickly. Um, this is a resume parser. So when resumes come in, they arrive by email and it is basically able to go through and parse that resume and put that data into the CRM automatically for you. It works fairly well and you can try this out, but there's really not much to it. It's really just mapping the fields that are gonna be on the resume with the fields that are in Zoho Recruit and hoping that the parser is good enough to kind of sort through those and put them in the, the proper spots. Um, and then once you've done that, you set up a resume inbox. So a resume comes in and you're basically going to want to forward that, do like a BCC to whatever email address they're going to give you here. You'll see there's a random email address on the screen, the JSG92TV at resumes2.zoharecruit.com. That's where the resume is going to come in. And then you've got a whole lot of different parsing modes that you can do. You've got lenient, which is, you know, it's going to be very high success rate. 
from importing it, but the accuracy is going to be a little bit low. Um, then you can go moderate where it's going to give you a balanced success rate, um, you know, as to whether it's actually successfully able to do it. Then strict, if it can't actually parse it perfectly, don't even bother. Um, the success rate will low, but the accuracy is pretty high. Um, Honestly, Tyler, I think we've played around with these a little bit. It, it's, you know, I think the lenient's a good one because you get the first name, last name, email, and then you might want to do the rest. But other than that, it's kind of one of those things where, you know, you really do want to look at the resume and not trust this. Yeah, it's a little bit tricky because, you know, some resumes are going to come in as a PDF that doesn't actually have the encoded text where it's really just treated like an image. It's going to struggle a lot with those. Um, it does a decent job if the resume is encoded to actually treat everything as text where you could like copy paste out of it. So your mileage will vary a little bit when you're using this, but it is a nice little tool to have at least for that lenient mode to be able to give someone a, you know, just a simple way to submit a resume and get entered into your system. And we'll talk a little bit about how they do these parsers and how they work here a little later on, because this is some third party technology that Zoho is actually using for this. All right. And then moving on. You've got your career website. Well, this is kind of interesting because when you go to this little career website section, you're going to see at the very top, they've got career site and then they've got career site beta. The career site is the original one when this rolled out years ago. Um, and there's really not much you can do to it. You can slightly rebrand it where you can go ahead and add your logo to it. Um, but other than that, this is kind of what it looks like. It's really basics. So you've got some careers, you can register, you can apply for these various jobs, not a lot going on there. I imagine this will be deprecated and go away very, very shortly. Um, but until then, what you just wanna do is you wanna click on this career site beta. This really gives you a lot of functionality to really customize things. So in the career site beta, you can go ahead and edit the properties and get a little more granular here. So what do you want to show on the site? Um, you know, what language you want it to be? We talked about that custom view earlier. Do you want it to be all job openings? Do you want it only to be job openings for the sales department, job openings for the marketing department? You can do quite a bit with this and you can build up different career sites. So you can have a career site just for sales, just for marketing, just for development, and they can be tailored just to kind of meet those needs. So you really have got a lot you can, uh, you can do with this overall. And then when you look at the customization part of this, now we're talking. Now you've really got a fairly nice website that you can do uh, quite a bit with. It is highly customizable. You can edit the text. You can change the background images. You can do a ton with it. If you've got a web developer, they, they really can, can do some interesting things with this as well. It's got, you know, remote jobs that are available. You've got nice filters. Uh, anyway, just a much better look and feel across the board. And to kind of get a little more granular, you can actually define your sections. You can go in and edit your header. You can edit your jobs. You can edit your footer. If you know CSS, HTML, you, like I say, your web developer can really pretty much do anything they want with this. You can also change the overall font colors for heading, subtext, body. Again, there's just a whole bunch uh, you can do with this as far as that customization goes. And really, really, really nice here besides, uh, you know, setting your overall page settings and language is it's completely embeddable. So you can get some really nice embed code. Give, once you get this designed the way you want it, you just give this code to your developer and then your developer can go ahead and paste this onto your website and you've got your job board online. So really, uh, really nice. I, I think it's the, really the only way to go is with this beta version. Spend that little extra time. It'll make your job board look good. You can kind of match it to the way your uh, website is designed as well and get your jobs out there. And then web forms is also here as well. It's kind of an odd place to put it, but this is basically if you want to set up forms for people to apply. So if you've done anything on the CRM where you've created a web form or if you use Zoho forms, this is very similar type of tool. You're basically going to create a form. You're going to get that code. You're going to embed that code on your website and somebody can use this to directly apply. So if you didn't want someone technically to maybe have to go to the portal, go to the career site, do all that, you've kind of got a job right there. You can just put a apply here button. People can go in and apply and just fill this out really quickly and get that right into Zoho Recruit and get the application process going. All right, so let's talk a little bit about the job board board hub. Now, this is kind of the magical part of an ATS because 
it's great that you can write your resume or you can put your job out there and you get it out there, but really where are people going to find you? They're going to find you on your job boards. So there are a couple of things Zoho does here. They've got source boosters. So if you want to actually pull in candidates directly from a job boards database, you can do that basically with a click of the button. So you can go into the, using these source boosters, you can go in and say, look, I want all candidates that fit this particular category. They have these qualifications, go ahead and pull them in. I want to market to them directly. And so you can turn these on and go ahead and pull those various things in. Some of these you have to pay for, some of them are free, but source, source boosters are a nice way. If you're not getting any feedback on your, on your job postings and you want to go ahead and market, these source post boosters can really help you do that. Additionally, you've got your job board list. So the job boards, this is where you can automatically go ahead and post your job listings. So you're familiar with a lot of these monster indeed. There are pretty much hundreds and hundreds of job boards on here. The initial setting when you go in here is worldwide. You're going to kind of want to define that. So if I define it to just United States um, and I only want to see the free ones, Zoho automatically turns on the, the free ones for you. You'll notice though that kind of the ones maybe you're aware of aren't necessarily going to be free, like Career Builder, Career Jet, you know, Monster, Indeed. You're going to have to pay for some of those. Um, but you've got at least a decent amount of job boards you can start off with. And if you already have an account at one of these other job boards, you can easily connect to that as well. Um, if we go down and, you know, Google, by the way, is free. Indeed has a free plan as well. And if you want to sort down, if you're watching this and they're in the U.S., you've got 17 free job boards in the U.S. So if you go ahead and just filter it that way, say, I only want the free boards. I only want the boards that are in the U.S., there are quite a few. And basically, once you do this, this is automatically going to post your job listing to these boards. And people, when they apply, it'll automatically also come back into Zoho Recruit. And then you have the quick apply. And the quick apply is really nice. So this is when someone is on one of these boards, Indeed, LinkedIn, Resume Library, Seek, and Easy Apply, which is a Zoho Recruit one. Uh, basically, this will go ahead and if they already have their information on that job board, because they have, they've logged in, they're part of that job board, it's going to go ahead and autofill a bunch of those fields and basically really lower your overall uh, drop rate in these mm -hmm. situations. Yeah, if, you, if you're planning on using one of these boards, like Indeed or LinkedIn, you might as well go ahead and turn on Quick Apply. It's not going to do any harm. It's just going to mean that they don't have to type their name and email into your application form. Just one last thing that might cause someone not to fill out that application. Yeah, really straightforward. And there's just, there's no reason not to have it on because it does fill that information in. And then the last thing we'll want to talk about here on the settings is compliance. Um, really talk a bit about this. So GDPR, if you are over in the UK, or I'm sorry, in the EU, you'll want to have GDPR on. Once you hit it on, um, you'll basically get some forms here that you can go ahead. It's your consent portal. You can make some slight customization to this, but people will have to fill this out for email, phone contacts, and those kind of notifications. I will tell you though, that once you turn this on, this sets up several workflows. It sets up several templates. It does a whole bunch of things. And if you ever want to turn it off, you're going to have to go reverse and back all of those out. And you're going to have to delete all of those templates and all of those workflows. Otherwise you, uh, GD, you won't be able to turn GDPR off. In the United States, you technically don't need this right now, but if you are doing business globally, it's not a bad thing. And I think it's probably just not a bad thing across the board to, to go ahead and turn on. Um, additionally, the sub processors, these are the things we were talking about that basically can do things such as parse resumes and do various data services that pull in this information. So uh, uh, Daxtra, is one that is a resume extractor that they use and people data labs actually will do enrichment on people. So basically it looks at a person and provides additional information on a candidate. Zoho just wants to let you know that they're not doing this. There are some third-party services that they've contracted with that are providing these services that are doing this for you. And then when we talk a little about the equal opportunity commission, uh, you can have be in compliance with that. So what does that mean? Well, if you are doing business, if you want to have your 
business with a federal agency and you actually do need to comply period across the board with this. There are federal laws protects employees applicants from discrimination. And if you put this compliance in, then this is going to make sure that you are in compliance with the EEOC. Additionally, you've got the Federal Office of Contract Compliance Programs. This is where if you're doing business with the federal government, you will want to have this turned on because this will make sure that everything you're doing is in compliance with that. And so if you get an audit by the government, you will have all of the all of your information in place to make sure that uh, you know, you've got the proper to do's and everything that's associated, all your interviews, everything is in compliance with that as well. So some really nice things. Zoho's really covered a lot of bases here. Um, this application has gotten much, much better over the years. And they've really, uh, they, you know, on, just on the compliance side alone, they've done a lot to make sure that, uh, you know, you can't get in trouble as an employer and they're kind of helping you through there.